Greetings and welcome to Code Quickie. And today we're going to be looking at fields in Google Drive API. And I know I haven't been on posting videos. I have a client and when I have clients, I really want to include my work in the videos on my YouTube channel. I want to focus, I want to get my work done perfect so that my work is done. Now I can just go back to making the videos I love and chasing after the Google Cloud Platform certifications. So please, thank you for watching, like, share, and subscribe. So today, we're just gonna be looking at fields in Google Drive API. And what we have here is that when we're grabbing file metadata, right? If you take a look at this resource, right? It is big, it is large. GCP is smart enough for us to help us here and not send us this whole object. But if we will, will it, we can get this whole object it's not smart in terms of performance. So today we're going to be looking about how to manipulate this metadata known as fields in Google Drive API in order to get what we want. And how we're gonna go about that, we are going to be using Angular. I mentioned this several times in all many videos. I am a very huge fan of Angular. It's Angular, get things done when it comes to performance when it comes to optimization and it really comes to ui to resources and features in the application angular you can just to get it done you could do things angular way you could do things your way or you can do things a mix the angular is the way to go enough said let us get back to the lab here the first thing you want to go ahead and do you want to go ahead and download the web application and i'm looking how to get this set up on staff clicks i'm having a difficult time trying to reach out to staff clicks if anyone can help me contact a member on a team in stack clicks please leave in the comments in the description i i'm not sorry about the description i'm not in the comments just a little brain freeze all right let's get that right back to it so you want to go ahead and download that um well that and after that we want to go ahead and we want to set up our credentials so we're going to head over to our credentials manager at console.developers.google.com want to go ahead and do create an api key want to copy it and want to go ahead and restrict the key right so we're going to go to restrict key right and then we're going to type in drive so google drive api and we want to save and now, while that's happening, we want to go ahead and do is we want to go over to our environment and we want to copy and paste this API key. Obviously, in your production applications, this will just easily go smack dab in the environment for Angular. It would go somewhere more safer, probably on the server. But for this lab and all intents and purposes, you can keep them out there like that. It's restricted anyway. What we want to go ahead and do next is we want to go ahead and create an OAuth client ID, name the application type web application, and we want to add our URI. We're going to need localhost where this will be ported. And you know, while I'm typing that all out, meanwhile, I just want to go ahead and I want to go ahead and have and build and serve my application. 8,000, we go ahead and create like so. And now we're gonna take our client ID and we're going to copy and paste like so as well. All right, the so next after that, we wanna do is we wanna set up the credentials. So we wanna head over to our fields directive and we want to give our application access to our environment that we set up in our app and we also want to be able to load the library that allows us to get done what needs to get done well in, in this step we are loading the library but also what we're really doing is really giving ourselves authentication access so that we can use g api to get to our account Right, and meanwhile, Angular app is built in. 
and it's ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this field button, which will allow me to log into the application. All right, and then once you click on your email, it's going, you're gonna get an error saying the app isn't verified. Well, that is okay. I can go ahead and go to quick start. And you want to do allow on the permit. And now we are ready to go. So now we're authenticated to work with the end users with the end users account and now let us let us get this set up so first things first we want to go ahead and we want to be able to make the request right so when we're trying to look at requests right we can either use we can either use the files with the files id um API endpoint right now we're using files and what I want you to pay attention to fields fields right so fields is a params right the params are question marks are like question marks in API endpoints equals Item and so on, right? So those are our query params, right? And by an Angular, it would just go here in this, in this observable that we are setting up. So since we have that now we have that function set up, right? What we can go ahead and do is we can go we can go in our environment and just go through these one by one. First things first was like going through the environment. Right, and then taking a look at our fields object, right? So we're gonna be looking at is we're going to be looking at trying to grab all the fields, grabbing one field, grabbing a nested field, grabbing a group of fields, and grabbing fields from several different places within the resource. So let's take a look at that. And as you could see, and as you will be able to shortly see, this is going to get very repetitive because I made a function and all there is a function call. All there is, because the function call is still the same, I'm still making an HTTP request to get all the files. Only thing that changes is what I am requesting in the fields parameters. So if we go ahead and take a closer look, right? First thing first, we want to get a list of all the files. Right, so this is what our string will look like. So same thing in your REST API and the URLs, right? That's what the string is going to have to look like. And we're going to take a look at what that's going to be like. So I wanna go ahead and hit make all is true. Okay. Wanna go ahead and click on fields. And now I'm going to I'm going to modify this code so that it can automatically click so that we won't have to refer it. Right. And so you can see here that this object that we get, it looks like it looks like all the fields that we have available here. Right. Something like that. So this is basically all that metadata about the file, we're getting all of it here. And this is great in Danny, but if you're having 100, 100 uh, files, we have 100 items in a drive, we're pulling all this metadata and we don't even need 99% of it, we wanna be able to know what to do. Yeah. And how to get those items one by one. So next what we wanna go ahead and do is we want to look at grabbing a single item. Before that, I just want to show you guys the like, the network, the um, XHR that was used in order to get the fields. So I'm looking through here, right, right here. All right, so this is your URL. So basically that's what I was talking about the params. If um, you want to 
I'll probably try to leave this on later in the lab. So this is what your endpoint would look like. And if you put it into Python, you put it into Node, this is your endpoint is going to look like for the most part. And what you do is you make a, see if I can request what that was, to get or post, ah, uh, refresh itself, that's okay. Looks like it's a get request, right? Yep, it was a get request, right? You see, make a get request to that to this URL listed here, right? And then as you run your angle, as you run the angle application, you already be able to see that as well. So now we know what the URL looks like. Let's look at just grabbing one at a time. Right, so now the field in question was icon link. So what we, we use this string here in order to get one single field. And if you want to look at fields, you can see that icon link is one single field like so. And we could take a look at what this looks like, right? We could take a look at what this URL leads us to, right? And it gives us an icon for a folder. So it's trying to indicate that where we're looking at right now is a folder by itself. Like referring to Linux, everything is a file. Now, let's see what else is, is offered to us here. Say if you want to reach something that is nested, say for example, let's look at um, our fields, right? We want to look at last modified, we want to grab display name. We can't just say files and then provide display name as an argument, right? We have to, it's nested, so we have to indicate that to the API. And we use this, we use this logic. Also, we could, so we use the slashes, right? Some XPath syntax, loosely used XPath syntax to indicate that's nested, or we could use some, we could use curly braces or curly braces, so on. So I like the slash better, it's different. And we'll be able to see that right now. Right, so now we're able to look at our display name. So you say to yourself, is this nested? Because I got an object and I got the display name. I'll tell you it is nested actually, because say for example, I go ahead and use, I go ahead and grab the whole group. We actually, you actually see right here that we get all that metadata that belongs to that group, right? And say if we want to head over to fields.json, say if we want to grab an item over here, we want to grab the item over here, and so on throughout these fields, right? What we can do is. use comma separated values in order to achieve the same. So very simple, GCP, you know, they've been working on making it, the interaction with GCP for the developers very simple, and they do that really, really well, really insightful, really intuitive, you know, along with that JSON, the CSV, the mainstream formatting that we do with code today. Right, we comma separate what we would like. I'm gonna set multiple to true. And you just have it for yourself. There you go. Right. And 
simply and and it's 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 simply it's really simple at this point where you could go ahead and play left down up and right but i think this is a play that will we'll get bored quickly but it all you're just doing is really just grabbing the fields once you understand the basic concepts of of how to get at nested fields right you could pretty much do almost anything and this will become very second head very quickly however this is something i wanted to share because these fields this metadata is very important it's very important to get at this metadata in your applications so thank you for watching please like share and subscribe and most importantly reach out to me in the comments i'm always ready and willing to answer as you help me i help you help each other on this journey towards google cloud certification thanks all for watching